up, you beautiful bastards? Welcome back to the Philip DeFranco Show. I have a wild Thursday show for you, so buckle up, hit that like button, and let's just jump into it. And you know, the first thing that we're gonna talk about today, and it should come as no surprise if you took even just a glimpse at the comment section yesterday, we need to talk about why creators small and large appear to be fucking furious with YouTube right now. And at the center of this controversy, you have a creator by the name of The Act Man. Right, so where we'll start is over the past couple of days, he has tweeted that his videos have been striked and removed, and that he was going to get demonetized and going to be removed from the partner program. Also worried that and questioning whether or not his channel could be entirely removed from YouTube. And with this, YouTube receiving a ton of of backlash with people saying, okay, there's really no good reason for you to do this. With one of the main theories that people were throwing around out there being that another YouTube channel had been false striking his videos to take him down. Which, for some background here, there are tons and tons of previous back and forth going between the Actman and this other YouTube that we're not gonna get into today. There is a reason that one of the videos in question here is about an hour talking about just this creator. And ultimately, my job is to try to take the news, make it consumable, get it to you, and so we're gonna focus really just on what's been happening recently. One of the things you need to understand about this other YouTuber, Quantum TV, is that right now there are tons of claims, accusation videos, and other creators involved with tons of people kind of accusing this guy of being a menace on the platform. And in fact, the Ackman has made videos about what he says are false copyright claims and other issues, including his most recent video, The Dark Age of YouTube, which was the first video to be taken down over the past few days, with it appearing to be taken down for nudity and sexual content, despite the fact that the, the video doesn't seem to include that, aside from a quick cucumber joke. But in that video, the Ackman notably lays out several allegations against this YouTuber, kind of summarizing them at one point, saying, the community guidelines this YouTuber has violated include external links, hate speech, cyberbullying and harassment, additional policies, ban evasion, copyright, harmful or dangerous content, child safety, and spam, deceptive practices, and scams. This whole video will be showing you the proof and also show you how YouTube is either unwilling or no longer enforcing these community guidelines. Also claiming throughout the video that the other YouTuber, Quantum TV, made threats saying that he knows where the Actman lives and even called the Actman's mom and more. And understand the list of things goes on and on. And understand he is not alone here with other creators, including Moist Critical and Asmongold, expecting and wanting this person to be removed. And the frustration from the public has only grown, especially in the last 24 hours, because the Actman noted that he had two more videos that were demonetized in age restricted within a short span of time. And while clearly frustrated and critical of YouTube adding, I wanna make it clear that I'm not at war with YouTube. I am deeply frustrated. However, if YouTube believes my videos violated the guidelines, they are fully within their right to take them down. We are in communication and I hope we can mediate a solution. Then yesterday you had the act man putting out a lengthy statement saying he's not actually sure he believes that this other YouTuber is behind the recent removal of his videos. And with that, arguing that no one, even this person, deserves to be condemned for false charges. And saying that he thinks the problem is actually the rather severe corruption at YouTube. Soon after that, he revealed the news of him likely losing monetization and likely being booted from the partner program, but adding with that, please do not harass or make any threats against the people involved in the situation. Instead saying, if you'd like to express yourself, feel free to do so responsibly and use the hashtag justice for Actman. And oh boy, did people use that hashtag. With other creators also being outspoken about what was happening like Moist Critical, in that video saying that it sucks that all creators can do to get help for their channels is to make this public spectacle online and hope that YouTube notices and cares. Regardless of how you feel about Actman or Actman's video that started all of this, I believe everyone can agree that the strike is utter b There is no grounds for nudity and sexual content strike here. And there's even less reasonable explanation for why two completely unrelated videos got uh, age restricted shortly after this problem was brought to Twitter. Also with this, the Ackman tweeting, warning, YouTube is trying to silence, strike, and demonetize anybody who covers the current situation. Post videos at your own risk, nobody is safe. Corruption is worse than I thought. But with that, I've been covering news on YouTube for 15 years, so fuck it. Whether it's true or not, let's take a swing. Because that is where the story ended until you beautiful bastards got me involved. Put on my little newsboy hat, reached out to YouTube, got a contact at YouTube to actually give a statement. And I figured one of the best ways to share YouTube's response here, their statement here was to give them directly to the Actman and allow him my platform to respond. So that's exactly what I did. I, I wanted you to kind of be the, the first person to hear it, and then we're gonna go through your reaction and response to it. So uh, according to YouTube, um, we're talking about two separate situations here. It's not apparently connected. Okay. Um, one, they said, yes, the video was removed for unwanted sexualization. They wouldn't confirm to me if this was it, it literally just in reference to that cucumber picture, which apparently uh, has become a massive part of, but they did confirm it was for unwanted sexualization. So it doesn't seem like that maybe there was nudity or anything like that, because it was like, that's a YouTube system yeah. uh, thing. But wow. so you have that. And then they said that the suspension is actually, the suspension of monetization is actually not connected to your videos. Um, what they said is that 
It is connected to a tweet of yours that has since been deleted where you threat, threaten to dox and harass the families of YouTube employees and creator families. And this might be a paraphrasing. It might be uh, we're trying to currently find uh, the, apparently the tweet in question. I could send it to um, you. But they, I think the tweet... Okay, so is it accurate? I'm going to make a new series of videos and I'll be doxing and harassing the families of YouTube employees and content creators. Um, and I believe it was posted June 6th. They can confirm... Uh, that they communicated the reason for your monetization being suspended. As far as the suspension, they referred to it as indefinite, so it could be 30 days or it could be f forever. And that's, and now I give you the, the floor because I literally got this five minutes ago. Well, first off, I want to say thanks for having me on. It, like, it's, it's great to meet you and it's great to be on here. It is kind of what I've come to expect from YouTube. Now, I want, I want to preface all of that by saying that tweet Saying like, I'm going to start this new series, doxing people, a lot of family fun involved. That was part of a satirical series of tweets where the first one was like a selfie, like feeling cute, might copyright strike some other content creators. And then I had another one, which was like, um, you know, feeling, uh, feeling something. I'm going to use my YouTube channel to promote hate speech because this YouTube allows that now. So these were very clearly satirical tweets, and I, I pushed the boundaries on the third one, I'll fully admit that. Um, but I did take the tweet down, and I don't think it was like a big deal. I don't think anybody thought that that was a legitimate threat. Of course, because, you know, it's because my family was doxxed, and they were doxxed like over a month ago, and YouTube took no action against that. And, and so I'm sitting here like angry and baffled and like filled with all these emotions and I put out this tweet because I'm kind of just in like a fuck it kind of mood and that wasn't responsible of me or right of me and I want to write that wrong um I th you know what's going on at YouTube is it looks bad for everyone and there's so many great people that work at YouTube and it's it sucks so the main your main thing is what you're doing it was satire you feel like, yeah, I understand where people could see me going a little bit too far, but I, I did want to confirm, did they communicate the, that that was the reason? Just because I didn't find anything about that public prior to them issuing that statement. I suppose if it's, if it's out now, then I can't say yes, that was communicated to me. I didn't want to say anything about it because I, I was told that and I wasn't sure if I should share the reason. Again, because it's kind of like a sensitive topic. Right. We're talking about, you know, doxing people and families getting involved. Um, so I, I chose not to uh, relay that information to people. I, I don't know if you're going to or if YouTube has released that information. Going to what? Sorry. Oh, like like release the reason why the channel was demonetized. Sure. Yeah, no, that's why I, I just want they, they confirmed it to me. And then I just kind of wanted to make sure because it did seem like online the conversation seems to be specifically about you and this other creator and about like this other video in question when uh, it, it, it does feel like it's the same but also two different situations and so I was trying to get clarity there because um, I don't know, I, f I feel like, like we were talking about before, it feels like these narratives form sometimes inadvertently, sometimes on purpose. So just to be clear so that we can kind of get past it, you did not publicly mention the reason you were suspended being related to the tweet because of why. I didn't reveal that because at the time I wasn't sure what information I should be sharing. I've heard other things that I know I shouldn't share and I didn't want to put my, my YouTube partner in the crosshairs. I, if something happened to his job because I leaked something that I wasn't supposed to, I'd be crushed because because there are good people at YouTube and some of them are, are fighting for me and I appreciate that. So I didn't reveal that information not to mislead people, but because I didn't know if I should. In your mind, because I know you said you wanted to kind of keep this tight, what would you love now that we have like confirmation that it's two separate situations of tweet and video, what is your ideal world of how things proceed from here? Because it does look like online things are really escalating. And so what I'm kind of hoping with this is like, we have what they're saying, we have what you're saying. How would you like to see it? If like this is this is your, instead of having to make a whole video on your channel, what would you say? The biggest part is probably the, the doxing tweet, which even if you take that in isolation, like one tweet, that's clearly satire and edgy, just leading to the entire channel being demonetized. If if someone at YouTube really had such a massive problem with that, 
you know, I did delete the tweet and I'd be willing to talk and have just like a short conversation about it just to clear the air and be like, hey, man, I I'm not trying to attack you guys at all. Um, I like moving forward. I think there's a lot of work to be done. I know that YouTube do, like we don't want YouTube to be a place where witch hunting results in like people getting deleted that like this group of people just doesn't like. But when the evidence is there and when it's like shown to YouTube that all these guidelines have been violated, I think moving forward, like and copyright abuse, nobody knows what constitutes copyright abuse on the platform. It, because if you file a false claim uh, and you don't list the video you're claiming, they consider that a fair request. And that makes no sense to me. So we need we need clear understanding of what they believe copyright abuse constitutes. And you know, these community guidelines. And I, I, I just hope there's more common sense introduced to YouTube when they're dealing with situations like this. Uh, I hope my channel obviously gets remonetized and I hope those videos that were age restricted uh, come back as well. Um, <clears throat> I hope Quantum is also rightfully terminated for, you know, being so terrible on the platform. And yeah. You know, I, I, I hope I hope good stuff comes from this. Um, I hope other content creators aren't like silenced or demonetized. I've heard I, I believe the algorithm was recently changed to demonetize videos with my name in them with uh, copyright abuse and false flagging. I, I can't verify any of that 100 percent. But, you know, it's just. I just want things, to, I just want the platform to be healthier. Sure, so kind of on that note, actually the last thing I'll say, you still kind of stand by the, the tweets. I have to find them where you kind of say that it's like this corruption at YouTube that is that is causing it because it, it does feel like there is a slight conflict in the, the narratives and the information that was known and being kind of said to the public. I, I feel like someone or some group of people is making, I feel like YouTube has made the wrong decision at every point in this. If you call that corruption, I guess I suppose that's an interpretation for it. But I, I believe YouTube has had a thousand opportunities to do the right thing. And at every turn, they've chosen to do the opposite. So thank you to Ackman for his time to react to this, to, to share his thoughts. Also, I do want to know that after we were done with the main recording, he did want to say, I don't want I don't want people to get all up in arms and like feel like they're at war with YouTube because, you know, like I've been saying, YouTube is still a fantastic place that I love. We just want to get these issues figured out um, and, and keep it about the issues and not try to v villainize YouTube, even though I I can't stop myself from doing that sometimes myself. Which actually kind of on this note, this story is still developing because after I interviewed him, YouTube did publicly respond to him on Twitter saying that it was because of the tweet. Yeah, main thing, y'all asked for coverage. Here's your coverage. Now with that, I pass the question off to you. What are your thoughts here? Because in general, you know, I always want this to be about y'all's opinion, but I will say one thing. It does feel like the tweet in question was very obviously a joke and satire. I know that YouTube can take safety and like anything kind of perceived as a threat very seriously, especially since, I mean, we even covered it on the show years ago when someone showed up with a weapon there. Seeing the tweet in question without just kind of like the rough read, you see the full context, it's, it's hard not to see that as anything but a joke. So of course, whether you agree or disagree with me with that note, love to know your thoughts, but also with the rest of the story, let me hear from you. But from that, I want to take a second to thank fantastic sponsor of today's show, Vessi. You've likely heard me rave about my Vessis before, and if you still don't own a pair today, you have to get yourself a pair right now. And for the few still new to Vessi, they're my favorite lightweight shoe that are perfect for all seasons because they actually keep your feet warm and dry through rain and sandproof for those summer beach days. They're built for everyday life. Vessi makes 100% waterproof and snowproof sneakers that are incredibly comfortable, breathable, and actually pretty stylish. And they've recently reimagined their everyday slip-ons to be even more breathable and supportive than ever before. They have that same sock-like fit, laceless design, and water Improved Dymatex technology that you love. And the Everyday Moves slip-ons now feature added arch support, which makes them perfect for long days on your feet and the perfect shoe for lightweight travel. And when I'm not in my slip-ons, I'm dressing up my weekend Chelsea boots for dates with Lynn's, business meetings, or just hanging with the guys. Trust me, you need a pair of Vessi. So head on over to Vessi.com slash DeFranco right now and get $25 off with code DeFranco. You'll thank me later. Then in This Is Huge, it's just a question of how huge it is news. We need to talk about the world of cancer research. And that's because there's this new clinical trial. It was published in the New England Journal of Medicine. It tested 
tested an experimental drug for patients with early stage rectal cancer, and they found that after just six months, tumors completely vanished in 100% of the patients. That is an unheard success rate in this field, which is why you have an oncologist at Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center and the lead author of the study saying, I don't think anyone has seen this before where every single patient has had the tumor disappear. And the drug achieved that with no chemo, no surgery, no vomiting, no hair falling out, just nine doses of intravenous treatment. In fact, most patients had no severe adverse side effects at all. But as expected, there are a few caveats. First and foremost, the study only used 14 patients so far, which is a pretty small sample size, even though notably they are diverse in age, race, and ethnicity. Secondly, they still have several more years of observation to make sure that the tumors don't reemerge or metastasize elsewhere in the body. And finally, this only applies to those who carry a very specific abnormality known as mismatch repair deficiency, which notably only occurs in roughly five to 10% of all rectal cancer patients and tends to resist chemotherapy. But regardless of that, the results here are huge. And with further research, doctors hope this drug can be used to treat the same abnormality in other types of cancer as well. Which is why when the study's lead author presented her results at the annual meeting of the American Society of Clinical Oncology in Chicago, she was interrupted before she could even finish by a round of applause with people gasping and crying. Plus in science, you never know how one discovery might lead to another and then another and then another. And while on its own, this story is amazing for those it will directly affect. It also, I think, provides hope. Anytime we can get hope in this world, I'll take it. And then, you know, on this show, we've been talking about inflation. We even had Representative Katie Porter on to talk about it with gas. But what you may not be aware of is what's happening right under your nose, and it's called shrinkflation, which kind of sounds like what happens to me when I get in very cold water. And actually, it's somewhat like that. Unexpectedly, you're getting something smaller than what you were promised. Like shrinkflation is when the size of product decreases, but their price largely remains the same. And you know, we've seen this before. It can be normal. But over the last few months, it has heavily accelerated. For example, Gatorade, it used to be sold in 32 ounce bottles but they're being phased out now in favor of 28 ounce bottles. But you will not be getting four ounces in savings. And we're seeing this everywhere. Over the last few months, Kleenex went from 65 tissues to 65 fewer sneezes. After a pandemic Kleenex, when every sneeze we thought might kill grandma, they're even shrinking the party size bags of Fritos. Scientifically, we know you need at least 18 ounces of Fritos to get a party started. Now it's just 15 and a half. And this extends to Chobani, yogurt, toilet paper. It's also not limited to the US. In the UK, for example, Nestle coffee tins have shrunk 10% in an in a bar of dish soap went from 155 grams to just 135. With all this leading to hot take headlines like big companies helping Biden hide the true extent of Biden inflation numbers, shrinkflation Bidenomics at work. And while you're free to blame whoever you want, to be clear, this trend isn't new at all. With experts pointing out that it's common in times of inflation when the cost of raw goods goes up and is done rather than shocking consumers with suddenly rising prices. Right, so we see this happen. They then stay that size for a bit. And then once inflation stabilizes, the cycle repeats. Though we got to give a shout out to the BAMF of the day, Arizona iced tea. You've probably heard about it before, but it's absolutely true. These beautiful bastards have managed to keep their product 99 cents, and it's a cosmic mystery about how they've done so for decades. Though people smarter than me say that it's probably a thinner and thinner metal on the can, smaller margins and cutting costs wherever else to keep the consumers happy. So I just gotta say props to them for being them in a world of Gatorades. And then the last thing that I wanna talk about today is actually, I mean, the last thing that I wanna talk about today is the January 6th public hearings, but that's not gonna go live until a few hours after I upload this video. Right, that could potentially be massive. The House Select Committee investigating the attack on the Capitol on January 6th, having the first public hearing revealing findings. And we're seeing interesting things happen right before it. Like former Education Secretary Betsy DeVos speaking with USA Today, confirming that she spoke with Pence about invoking the 25th Amendment. You also had the FBI arresting a GOP gubernatorial candidate in Michigan over January 6th charges. But given the prime time slot of these hearings, I think we're gonna just learn about this together. So with all that said, the last thing that I wanna talk about, very related story. In that, you had a powerful figure allegedly sending his people towards a singular location. But in this story, it wasn't Trump, it was me. And the people didn't go towards the Capitol, they went towards a Taco Bell. Let me explain. So, and you already know this because you live this, day to day, we've been moving towards a quick and mobile world for years now. I can order food, a massage, a car wash, pretty much anything on my phone. And some stranger that I've never met will go get or do something for me. And as far as food, specifically, we're seeing the rise of things like ghost kitchens where you can't even go in, it's just on the food apps, the rise of things like Beast Burger. And for existing establishments, they're having to adapt. One of the best at adapting, they seemingly are ahead of the curve, is. Taco Bell, with the company actually opening a Taco Bell Defy location in Brooklyn Park, Minnesota yesterday. With the idea being this is a digitally driven concept with technology made to speed up service and drive through time. And so with it being the only one in the world and not being able to justify flying to Minnesota to buy a car chalupa, I got an idea. What if you beautiful bastards were everyone's eyes and ears on the ground? So I sent out a text on the text line if you're in North America, definitely join. But I limited it to people that have phone numbers that seem to be in that area. And I was like, hey, 
If you go there, would you film? I personally expected one or two people to respond. I have so much footage. The nation came out to a point where I can't use everyone's footage. I got stuff inside, outside. I have fucking drone footage, Taco Bell. I have everything except your blueprints. And so on that almost creepy note, let's experience the new Taco Bell Defy together and see if this is the future. Good morning, everyone. Hello. This is the uh, new Philip DeFranco <laughs> correspondent. It is a beautiful, somewhat rainy day here in Minnesota. And I'm gonna go drive about a half hour to check out the new Taco Bell Defy. I just need you to know Philip DeFranco and if anyone's watching this, uh, this is my second time in here today. Uh, not just because I love the channel and want to get a good video for this, but also uh, because I'm kind of addicted to Taco Bell. So thank you and you're welcome. This is me making a U-turn because the line is absolutely ridiculous. The line to get into the cool two-story Taco Bell goes around the corner. So, so I'm here at the new Taco Bell in uh, Brooklyn Park, the Taco Bell from the future. I already placed my order and it looks like we're heading over that way. It's a new two level Taco Bell where basically all the operations happen up top and then they drop your food down to you and it's four drive through lanes at the bottom. So you can either order from their menu, I don't know if you can see it right there, at the store, you can use their online app or whatnot. So I chose the online app because I wanted to use the elevator experience and see what that's like. Pull up right on the other side to the left is I believe people who are currently making a mobile order. There's a small purple section here that if you already have your mobile order ready, you go right in there. Um, and then that black section, black bar across the top, that's where you go and make an actual uh, drive through normal order. I placed my order ahead of time. We've got a little party here and I am pickup, so I am in this middle lane. Then what you do is you pull up to one of these lanes. There's three pickup lanes and then one regular order and pay. And then you pull up to one of these bins right here or one of these uh, kiosks and you scan your QR code and then your order populates right here. Perfect. And you're gonna pull forward as soon as that car is done. Here in the drive through we just scanned our mobile pickup uh, QR code and we're about to pick up some Baja Blast. And you just drive forward and you sit right by that and you just kind of wait for the order to drop down. Mine took uh, less than a minute from the So it looks like that's where the food's coming down, obviously. Hi there, Jared. Yes. Coming down. Perfect, thank you. Would you look at that? <laughs> that's so cool. The only big piece of advice is you definitely want to pull closer to it than expected. It's. Uh, a little tough to reach um for the first day out here it looks like they have a lot of help going on uh people help getting the app installed getting the whole system done like you can see these people up here they're just helping out trying to make sure that we got everything done right so you know how cool the combination pizza hut taco bell is um what about a two-story taco bell with fucking bank lanes did you guys say it was quicker than normal or oh yeah super quick there was spots we could park and make a mobile order and everything. And it's like a hundred people in front of us and we got through in like 10 minutes. Well, that was entertaining. And the best part of all of that is that I can't have gluten or dairy. Just got back from Taco Bell, uh, from the new Taco Bell Defy. And uh, it was great. That has been Taco Bell Defy. And once again, I just want to say a massive thank you to everyone that participated. Even if you, your footage wasn't used in this, Thank you so much. I always say that the show isn't the show without y'alls and specifically and singularly, that is true about today's episode. But yeah, the question I'll attach to this story is, do you think this is the future? We're gonna see other companies joining in on this kind of concept. As well as I'd love to know your thoughts on any story today because this is the end of today's show. As always, thank you for watching, like, and being a part of the conversation down below. If you want more news coverage, I got more news coverage right here. With that said, of course, my name's Philip DeFranco. You've just been filled in. I love yo faces and I'll see you next time. This hair has been driving me crazy.